What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be checking out a pretty awesome little single board computer, development PC, industrial PC, whatever you want to call it. Some companies are selling these to single board computers, some are selling them as embedded systems, but basically what we have here is a mini bare bones PC powered by an Intel Tiger Lake 1135G7i5. ASRock has these listed under their single board computer section on their website, but that's not where I picked this one up. I actually picked this up on eBay for a pretty decent deal in my opinion. I paid $287 shipped to the door. It might sound like a lot for a little board like this, but I've been looking around for this 1135G7, and the cheapest laptop or mini PC that I could find with it was anywhere from $450 up to $800. And if you did end up getting a laptop with this CPU, chances are it's going to be locked at about 15 to 18 watts, so you wouldn't get the max performance out of it. But with this one here, we can jack the TDP up. And I'm going to tell you right now, I have tested this little chip. It will run PS3 games, Wii U, and it even runs Switch games. So I also received the heatsink here. We have two pipes going up to a little thin array, and we have our blower fan. I'm going to go ahead and install this. I'm just going to use a little bit of thermal paste. Mounts on with four screws. Not a big deal at all. Super easy to do. Once I had the heatsink installed properly, I just mounted the fan up. Now it's time to install my RAM and storage. And for that, this will actually handle up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. But I'm going with 16 gigs of DDR4 at 3200. I'm going to go with a simple Kingston 256GB M.2 SSD. I've already got Windows 10 Pro installed on this SSD, and that's really the main reason I'm going to install it in this unit. As for I.O. on this little board, we have two Ethernet ports. One is a 25 gigabit Ethernet port. The other one is a gigabit Ethernet port. We also have full-size display port, full-size HDMI, two USB 3.2 ports, and our power input. Moving around front, we have an extra USB 3.2 port, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and two Thunderbolt ports. This little board has dual Thunderbolt 3 built in, so you can add an eGPU if you wanted to. And just to give you an idea of the size of this little board, I have a Raspberry Pi 4 for comparison. It is a bit bigger, does cost more, but it's putting out a lot more power than the Raspberry Pi or any other ARM single board computer that I've ever tested. As for the specs, we have the i5 1135G7, 4 cores, 8 threads, base clock of 2.4 GHz with a boost up to 4.2. Built-in Intel XE graphics up to 1300 MHz. This will accept 4 to 64 GB of DDR4 running at 3200 MHz. An M.2 SSD up to 2 TB, and you can run Windows or Linux on this unit. I'm sure we could get Android up and running on this also. Now, it's time to jump right into some testing. Like I mentioned, I'm running Windows 10 Pro here. We're going to test out some 4K video playback, some WebGL performance, we'll run some benchmarks, test out some PC games, and then finally get into some emulation. Alright, so here it is, Windows 10 Pro running on this little board. As you can see, we have that Tiger Lake U i5 1135G7. We also have those built-in Intel Iris Xe graphics. Now this chip runs at 28 watts, but it looks like this board is set up to run at a little bit of a higher TDP, so we should get some pretty good performance out of it. And uh, to tell you the truth, I've already done a little bit of testing, and this thing is really impressive for its form factor. As you can see here in hardware info, our power is set to unlimited, and it'll go up to 38 watts or 55. I will do some power consumption numbers from the wall by the end of this, but this thing is really snappy. Let's check out some 4K video playback. You know, I've tested the 1165G7 before, and in my opinion, it's an amazing little chip, and this really isn't that far off. 4K video playback on this is just fine, whether you want to do it natively or streaming from your favorite video apps. Here we have YouTube. Got 12 drop frames and that's really just the initial load in. 4K on this is going to work out just fine. And you can actually do up to four displays out on this. Both of the USB Type-C ports on the front will do display out. We also have display port and HDMI. Before we move into some benchmarks and gaming, I just want to show you a little bit of WebGL performance. We're sitting at 60 FPS here. Move up to 1,000 fish, 5,000 fish, 10,000, and 15,000. It starts to struggle a bit. We'll just take it up to 20. And it's definitely not going to handle that very well. So it looks like 10,000 is the cutoff. But overall, really good WebGL performance here with that Edge browser. So now I want to move into some benchmarks. 
One that I had issues with was 3D Mark Fire Strike. It just kept crashing when it got to about the third graphics test, so I wasn't able to finish that one. But I got a few here to show off. First up, Cinebench R23. Ran a multi-core test here, and we got a total of 5,691. Now, if we take a look here, it's saying that it's beaten out that 1165G7, and that's because we have a higher TDP on this little setup. But it's coming in right under that i7-7700K, which is a desktop CPU running at a much higher wattage. Next benchmark I ran was PC Mark 10. We got a 4,408. Not bad. Next on the list, Geekbench 5, single core, 1316, multi, 4961. Single core is looking great here, and multi core, given that this is only a quad core CPU with eight threads. I also wanted to run a couple GPU benchmarks, and like I said, it kept crashing with Firestrike, but I was able to get Night Raid out of the way, and those Intel XE graphics aren't doing a bad job at all. Total score, 15,459. And Time Spy came in with a 1,425. So seeing how small this board is, I think all of these benchmarks came out really nicely. But now it's time to get into some real-world PC gaming, and I was really impressed with this little thing. First up, Overwatch 1080p, medium settings, 100% resolution scale. We got an average of 68 FPS. Now I understand that this is a very highly optimized game, but seeing this running on a board this small is really impressive. Next up, CSGO, 1080p, medium settings. I've had really good luck with Intel XE graphics in this game here, and this is no different. Got an average of 118 FPS. And this will do 60 at high if you really wanted to do that. Fortnite, 1080p, low settings with 100% resolution scale, average of 64 FPS. So when it comes down to it, this is actually handling the eSports games pretty well. I also wanted to throw a fighting game in here, so we have Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. I did have to go down to 720p, medium low settings here. With all of these effects on screen at 1080p, I did see it dip down more than it does at 720. And every once in a while, it will go down to around 58 with this, but it's still pretty playable. And finally on the list, Cyberpunk 2077, 720p, low, 75% resolution scale, it's right there around 30, but you will see a drop. It's still pretty cool seeing Cyberpunk 2077 even running on a board like this. So seeing how this little board did with PC gaming, I had to throw some higher end emulators at it. Here we have PS3 with RPCS3, Vulcan backend, tech and sick, scaled to 720p, it's running this at full speed, we're at 60 with it. I am blown away that this little board can run PS3 games. From the wall using a kilowatt meter, at idle, 9.6 watts, 4K video playback, it pulls 14.6, and keep in mind, this is in performance mode because I wanted to get the maximum TDP out of this little i5 CPU. And with it set up like this, when you max out all four cores and eight threads on the CPU and the GPU at the same time, this can actually pull up to 64.8 watts from the wall, which is quite a bit for a small board like this. But keep in mind, this was an extreme test. Gaming or emulation, you'll never see this kind of power consumption. So yeah, I'm really impressed with the performance of this little board, and these Tiger Lake CPUs do such a great job at emulation, even with the built-in Intel graphics. Those new XE graphics do handle Vulkan really well, and a lot of the new emulators, like you saw running in here, Yuzu, SimU, and RPCS3 can rely on Vulkan, and you can get some really good performance out of a small board like this. 
So I definitely want to come back to this in the next couple days. I want to test out my Thunderbolt eGPU dock on this thing. But if you're interested in checking these out, I will leave a few links in the description. In order to get one like you've seen here in this video, your best bet is to just keep checking eBay. But if you're interested in this as kind of a small form factor, bare bones mini PC, ASRock does offer them from the 11th Gen i3 up to the 11th Gen i7. And the i5 version, the 1135G7, is going for around $430. And like I mentioned, I didn't want to spend that much, so I just set up some notifications from eBay, and as soon as one popped up, I went ahead and bought it. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this little board, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.